Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our final webinar of the, uh, the year. I've got the wonderful Maya next to me here, and we're doing this webinar together in our recording studio at Key Business Advisors. So um, this is a new experience for us, our first time. Beautiful. So I hope you enjoy this webinar. It's, it's a, how to kick off uh, strong in uh, 2021 and kickstart 2022. Um, so we're the hosts, myself, Colin Wilson, the Director of Key Business Advisors, and the wonderful Mayo Trebeska, who is our HR consultant team leader at Key Business Advisors. Okay, in today's session, this is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover ways to reflect on 2021 to empower your team, because it's been a real tough year for many businesses, especially here in Victoria, because we're the number one city in the world that's been, uh, been locked down. Tips to finish the year off strong for 2021. The importance of code of conduct around festive celebrations. So we always have one great case study that comes in or one great case that comes in, that turns into a case study of where something goes pear-shaped at a uh, Christmas party or a, or, a, or a business function. The importance of having a, a good kickstart to 2022 and get, making sure you're all planned and organised coming back in to, to grow. And ways to celebrate success and close that year out because it, you know, May, it has been a very difficult year and we only had our Christmas party last week, which was absolutely fantastic. Yes, it was. And uh, absolutely loved it. Okay, so let's get into it. Um, a couple of bit of housekeeping before I do, but um, a little bit about myself. I love what I do. I'm the Director of Key Business Advisors. Very passionate. 14 years we've been doing this business now and we just love going into companies and, and helping them, you know, have that great culture and, you know, good strategy and best practice with HR to get them to grow. That's a little bit about me. Um, what about yourself, Maya? Well, I've been in HR for over 13 years now. So yep. I've been part of the KBA team for five years, five and a half almost. Um, and I love everything in HR from onboarding all the way to offboarding the staff and everything in between is the way I like to say it all. Yep, that's um, it. One of the biggest things is very much the performance management process how to lead our managers as well and take them to the next level and learn every aspect of HR. Yeah, and it's been pretty challenging the last uh, few weeks as we come out of lockdown. We've certainly uh, uh, seen a lot of companies uh, that want change and want to create things and um, yeah, a little bit of disruption happening out there, which is, uh, which is all part of the journey. Look, uh, now our mission in this business is always to take business from good to great. Um, we're, that's what we're all about. Very much like Jim Collins, the book, how to build that level five leadership in an organisation, that strategy, that's where it all comes from. And our purpose is to take our customers, you know, and help them improve, you know, all aspects of employee engagement and performance of their business so they can grow. And I think, you know, right now, you know, especially the last 12 or the last two years now, but I think, I actually think, you know, all the clients that I talk to, the last six months has been the hardest uh, over the whole pandemic. And, um, and it's now about time to, turn things around and get that back on track for, uh, for 2022. The four key pillars of our business, business strategy and growth, people and culture, HR advice and support, and we do a hell of a lot of sales training, leadership training um, at Key Business Advisors. Now, just to make sure you stay on board, we uh, have got a, a couple of free giveaways. We're gonna give away two free disc profiles but we're using a product which is called uh, Disk Manager Profiles, yeah. So, um, so therefore, uh, all the managers that are out there, and um, we might even incorporate that into a, a product we call Catalyst uh, as well, which is a new product that, uh, that we want to promote. So stay tuned because uh, we'll draw that at the end of this webinar. Okay, so let me start off with our first topic, Maya. Right, our first topic, yeah. ways to reflect on 2021 to empower your team. And as I said, it's been pretty challenging, but for me, it's very, very simple. What we've got to do is we've got to reflect on what, what, what's actually happened, right? So for me, it's been very, very challenging. We've all had to uh, overcome some obstacles through the, uh, through the pandemic, but working from home, now we've got a hybrid business. Maybe some of the breakthroughs that we've gone through as well, some great wins and things that have actually happened, some things we've overcome. Some great achievements with people, with the staff within your business or what the business has actually done, I think it's really, really important. You might have set some milestones. These are some of the things that we wanted to get to. I know certainly we were launched our uh, our business plan for the next three years, Maya. Right? I think it was the best thing that we did because we thought we'd run back together. What we want to accomplish as a team. Yep. What can we do in small bite-sized pieces and just make sure that we achieve one thing after the other yep. and work towards it. And I think on top of your next point, wins and losses. Right. So, you know, looking at, okay, when we didn't probably hit that one 
specifically that we were aiming for, but we've tried and what processes or what did we learn during that? Through that time. And I think, look, we've had some great milestones that have gone through this business over the last, uh, last uh, certainly last 12, 12 months when you sit back and have a look at it. I think resilience, I think everyone should be congratulated for being resilient during this hard time. And being agile, so we've had to move and change things quickly. Gratitude, right? So we're very grateful for me that I'm very grateful for our team, love our team. We're all together as one team, so I think that's really important. And then also well-being, I think, is a big thing, you know. So uh, like many business owners I speak to, um, you know, the thing that we're all really pushing right now is to get some people to have some time off, you know, because no one's gone on a holiday, haven't been able to. So hopefully, you know, our staff can get out and about. And um, that well-being is really, really important, you know, working from home, what work-life balance as well. So good recognitions and a big celebration because, you know, we hope and we pray that, you know, 2021 is uh, done and dusted and 2022 is not going to be a year like we've had for the last couple of years. That's for sure. I think uh, what's important is, you know, looking at your business strategy, right? So, you know, some of the things that we talk about is, you know, getting our people and our structure right and getting our products and services right and, you know, reflect on, you know, these are some of the things that we've done well this year. Look at our industry trends. Maybe look at some of our competitors. We've seen some businesses that have opened up and thrived. We've seen some businesses that are just hanging in there. And unfortunately, we've seen some businesses that have closed down. Yeah. I think it's really important to really look at your competitors. Your competitors, um, 12, 24 months ago, maybe not the competitors there in the market. Well, somewhat different. Might be a brand new um, business that's come up and, and has you know similar similarities to your or completely changed their mindset as well and their their plan. So really looking at who is current and now or your proposed future as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think look at our marketing strategy. I mean that's certainly one thing that I will definitely we you know we're celebrating is the the great work that Emma has done uh, and Lorraine, you know, in this business, we've really marketed ourselves well. I think we've done a great job of that over the last uh, last uh, couple of years, but particularly the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good opportunity to sit back. Did you put some any type of business systems or processes in place for improvement? Now, I know that we all uh, had to uh, race home and you know, uh, work from home, not like this year, but the year before. So that was also a change, you know, technology enhancements. Maybe look at some business revenue, our budgets, KPIs, do a swap. Acknowledge everything you've done really, really well in the year and be ready to move on to 2022 because it's uh, it's only about three weeks away and we're, we're, uh, we're into 2022. Okay, I hope you got a lot out of that first topic. My next topic is around tips to finish off the year strong. So internally, I think um, you want to maximise all those sales opportunities. So, um, you know, definitely if you're a B2B type of business, go through that pipeline, have a look at what's going have a look at all your quotes. What can we do to finish off strong and set ourselves up for a good start for January, um, February? I think it's really, really important. Close off any outstanding work or any projects, any work that uh, you've got going, um, I think is really, really important. So if we've made some commitments or promises to our clients, how do we try and close them out before the end of the year? And I definitely think, you know, you want to be thanking your clients uh, for supporting your company, especially the last uh, 12 months because it has been difficult. And I think when we look at the thank you to the clients, it doesn't have to be something so big. It can be something as a phone call. It could be something as, you know, buying them coffees or taking, you know, cupcakes or or, or a cake right. or anything like that and say thank you so much um, for, for supporting us during this particular time. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, you know, it's been hard because it, it feels weird going out having a bite to eat with a client or breakfast or a lunch and stuff. We're definitely, or dinner, we're definitely into that now and um, we want to get into it. And then obviously if you're in retail, you know, like a retail business that should be thriving right now with the Christmas trade, you really want to maximise those uh, every opportunity. But I think internally, review any outstanding tasks that need to be completed and, you know, what we might have a can-do or to-do checklist to close out uh, the years. These are the things that we need to do. I know certainly that's how I like to operate. I'm a bit of the old school mate. I write it down and tick the box and away it goes. And I think, um, you know, the big one for me is be appreciative of your team because, you know, uh, it has been really, really difficult. And we know, we hear that a lot of people are going to move in 2021 and, you know, the great change. But um, certainly, uh, you know, I think if you appreciate your team and you close the year out well, then hopefully they'll stay and come back and join you back in uh, 2022. What I think is really, really important is you need to close out 2021 and be very, very clear, have a clear mindset that you are prepared in 2022. So we're all tired, we're all drained. Um, I can say that. 
Um, but definitely you want to go into 2022 with a very clear mindset. You know, we're having lots of conversations with some of our great customers and we've got some customers that are proactive that want to get things set up now so they go into 2022 with a clear mind. And we've also got um, you know, a, a large portion of customers as well that just can't wait to see the back end of 2021, too tired, too stressed, and we'll deal with it in 2022. I'm okay with that as long as you deal with it in, you know, back in early January and, and get into it. Don't let it you know, go to February or March because then the year's already taken off. And I think between now and 2022 is the first stages is maybe as a business owner or a manager, reflect on what did you have done for that year and say, okay, well, this is the plan um, that I want to put in place for 2022. Just yesterday, last week, I had a client say to me, I, it was on my to-do list, so thanks for checking it off. Just because we mentioned it yeah. um, was a good thing. Very important, very, very important. Okay, Maya, I'm going to hand this over to you. I'll take a step back. And Thank you. Topic three, the importance of code of conduct around Absolutely. the festive celebrations. So we all know... We call it within the season. So being able to really reflect how that actually goes against or goes in line with your values. So making sure staff know what to do, how to do it, and the expectations are for the festive celebration. I think I went once. Yep. yep. All right. So when we're talking about the Christmas parties or any, any party in particular, we want to make sure that we've been creating um, creative in how we run the function. So when I talk about um, be as inclusive as possible, I mean, okay, it doesn't reflect necessarily, need to reflect towards alcohol, but we all know everyone loves food. So yes. food might be one of the ones that we go to, a nice dinner or a nice celebration. Then we want to look at perhaps we want to throw in some games or anything like that, making sure that everyone is just as inclusive as the other and giving them that option to attend or not. We also want to be clear about the standards and behaviour. So when we're talking about the code of conduct, that's what we've, we've mentioned. So we always have it. These are the, our expectations. This is what we would like from you. When we're having a function, it's really important. And I know we've got a lot of stories that we can share, but probably not in today's session uh, because there's so many that come through in terms of we didn't have a finishing time. So therefore, we went and continued on to have a, a party after that. And where does that actually lie between, okay, is it a work function or is it now friends hanging out and having another function straight after? Yep. Also looking at rewarding the employees for their efforts during the year, you might want to do... Chris Kringle, Silly Santa, whatever you want to call it, or even might want to say a thank you, here's a bottle of wine or a box of chocolates to the team. We also want to look at if we have a Christmas party and there is alcohol involved or it's uh, whatever the case may be, you want to make sure that there's a person that can be at that function that is almost the supervisor of the whole overall function. So I know and if it's a larger business, you might want to have someone that's overlooking just every 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 aspect of the business, I guess, whether it's problematic, whether the joke's gone a little bit too far, um, and, and telling that person to settle down. You know, we, we do have a few that come about that we've had to fix after Christmas or at New Year's. Um, so just be very, very mindful of that. Also, is it's important about social media. We're all on social media, even today, just making sure that we do whatever we, it is as in line with the business processes and requests in terms of the products and the other policies that are included. So specifically, hopefully, you have a social media policy that says not to post things uh, during these type of... Yeah, there's not as much inappropriate is probably the word, yes. I had yeah. one where there's had, um, they were in a WhatsApp group, specifically someone was joking um, about, a, you know, there was some funny commentary um, throughout that WhatsApp message and then there was an inappropriate photo put in. And that person was heavily offended. So being mindful that, you know, they weren't probably laughing at that person, but it was the way it was portrayed by others. Yes, yes. If I do recall that one, um, the, the owner of the business at the end of the night um, when he got home, you know, he didn't go and scroll through the whole lot. He actually just looked at the last couple of posts and said, great, great function, guys, great event, not realising that uh, that there was some inappropriate stuff in between, that in between which created havoc for him. That's right. Yep. And then the other one is really to be mindful of the health and safety obligations. We all can tend to forget now we are at another function or we are at another building, so therefore it's that business's responsibility. It's actually as employers and managers to make sure that, again, everything is health and safety standards, making sure that the duty of care, if it's transportation, mm -hmm. we've got a way home for them. 
I think it's really important. I think you touched on a great um, um, topic, you know, with Christmas parties. We don't want to, especially me, and I've had people rock up at my front door in the morning on a, after a Christmas party on a Saturday. It was actually Sunday morning because it went a little bit too far. But I think, you know, what's important is making sure you do that due diligence. And, and everyone is clear. So if someone wants to go and party on with, that's fine. They just, you know, they're taking their, their own, uh, what's, the word, what's the word I'm looking for, their own um, responsibilities into their own hands by not following your process of sending them home. That's why I always recommend to have a start time and a finish time of your Christmas party. What is worse is when the business owner goes out and keeps paying for the alcohol and partying on with them, then that all goes out the window because they're the ones that's actually facilitating it. So it's got to be very, very careful yeah. that you don't uh, screw that uh, screw that up. Okay. So in terms of reminding staff about their behaviour during the celebration, so what we love to do is an invite or a memo or an email to say these are the expectations to let the staff know saying, okay, you're invited to our Christmas party. These are our standards of behaviours. Will you be attending? Yes or no? Yes, correct. Yep. Great time to send out the or resend out the code of conduct and the other company policies. So when we're talking about the other ones, whether it's the equal employment opportunity, the grievance process, um, making sure that there's no dis um, discrimination, social media and um, social events policies. Great. So there's quite a few that are there specifically that yeah. you'd like to add. Even driving a company car, right? So yes. we've, we've had uh, a client that had their car. Uh, from a Christmas party once uh, in a river. So uh, it's really important that, that everyone understands. Which is that point arranging transport to and from the venue. As an employer, it is still your duty of care to make sure that they get there safely and come back home safely. Unless they're partying afterwards and they've taken it, like I said, their own initiative to continue and party on, your responsibility stops when the party stops, right. as per your end time. And then the other one is, Outlining the consequences if they don't follow those um, expect, standard expectations that we have. So if they're inappropriate, they get into a bar fight or something like that, that's completely against the company policies and processes, so we don't accept that. And my biggest one is the illicit drugs or excessive alcoholism. So at the end of the day, yes, we all like to have a good time and party, but we've got to, again, manage the intake. Uh, and as a duty of care, you know, you might say two, the company is providing two drinks per part, you know, per person. And if, you know, Colin wants an extra drink and I'm not drinking, you can't really take those extra two drinks to succeeding over the limit. Yeah, it's all about, you know, just being responsible, I think. Absolutely. You know, like 100%. But I think the other thing too is, you know, we know that we've run out of HR business. So there are many times where our staff are at the Christmas party and, uh, and they're asked to watch over people. and. Yeah. Put, put the people in a taxi when they need to be put in a taxi, not uh, when it's done uh, too late. So very, very good. Okay. So what I want to touch about here is the allegations of bad behaviour. So we're talking whether it's um, there's had you know two two people at the party and they've raised a grievance about something's happened at the party that they weren't um, happy with. Um, and in this live example was. The person was drunk and they didn't realise what they had said or done during that particular time, but then the repercussions of here comes Monday morning, the conversation needs to be had. So we just want to make sure that, again, at the end of the day, employers know you're liable for the conduct during those particular functions to make sure that, as I mentioned previously, they are aware of the standards of behaviour, but also what happens during that particular time. And then when you're having a conversation with that employee, if you've put all those steps in place, we should minim that should be minimised. Also looking at any disciplinary action that needs to be taken. So really looking um, if it happens, what kind of treatment do they get? So if someone got a first and final warning during that particular time, and a similar instance has occurred, then the expectations would be that same uh, another person will get the same kind of repercussions. Right. Yeah. So not favoritism thing somebody just because, oh, he's a top salesperson um, and it's okay that he did that one time, but then somebody else in the business that's less favorable gets a different um, outcome from that. Also looking at a um, complaint, it should never be dismissed as just banter. Just because it was a Christmas party, everyone was friendly. No, we just need to have a look whether, again, what process, what are we going to investigate um, to make sure that everyone has that equal opportunity to raise the concerns and that we look at it in a similar manner. I know some of you might be thinking, oh, my God, you know, like this is a lot to take in. But, um, you know, every year we get a clanger that comes through this business, right? And it's uh, and one that we can tell a massive story about 
and if you actually just backtrack why it happened and how it happened, um, you, and if you sat in on and saw some of the charges that uh, um, you know we charge for uh, investigating or a lawyer charges for investigating, and then there's a payout if, it, if it, something goes pear shaped. Um, it is it, we're only talking about doing a due diligence. That's what we're encouraging you to do, and make sure that everyone is very very clear about what those expectations are. And I think you've got to also look at it, not just the, um, you know, it's steps in place, we're also looking at the whole culture, right? Yeah. So if it's accepted as a, an okay thing to do, but it's really against everything that you believe in as a business, then that's the things that you want to look at. And then that's one thing I will say is the, the younger generation of today, they look at those things. Absolutely. Um, you know, like it's very, very important to them. About how people are treated, what's being said, and um, and all that professionalism. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go on and talk about the importance of kickstarting, uh, having a good kickstart in 2022. And uh, and this is something again that, uh, as I said, you know, it's been tough for so, so many businesses in 2021. And you know, in many ways, we're going to try and pick up the six month shortfall or the 12 month shortfall that we've had, or financial year six month shortfall um, in the next half of next year. So to me. You want to go into 2022 being very planned and well organized is the way i would say it you know uh, it's important to try and leave 2021 as organized as possible when you're returning back in 2022 um you know and your team to hit the ground running so if i delay things i might get staff come back and i just want to put out staff will come back and they've had some time off it might take a little while to get into it but if i've got a plan they know what they're going to get into pretty much straight away but if they haven't It'll be well. I'm going to spend the next two or three days getting myself organised. We don't want that. We want to know this is what we've got going. Yeah. And I think it's part of it. Um, really important. Set no different to coming back from COVID um, or coming back into the office is really giving that first half of that morning to you know everyone wants to talk. Oh, what was Christmas like? How was your time off, etc. And really, you know, just giving them that time to settle in. Yep. Yeah. But have that as a plan for having time to settle in and account for it during that, uh, you know, 2022 plan is the first kind of day would probably not be as, I guess, financially productive, no. um, but you want to make it as productive as it can be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You want to just get them into the um, swing of things, have all their little chit chats at the start and then get them back into focus. That's right. And that's why it's important to have your goals and objectives ready. And make sure they have their goals and objectives ready too. I think all of your staff, your team members, your leaders, and lots of stuff, I think is, is really important. Um, and I think, you know what, we, for us, we, know, we do our performance appraisals either, you know, at the end of every quarter. So, you know, this quarter's now gone or the half is now gone. So we'll definitely do our reviews with all of our team members uh, in January when they return. And that's another way to uh, set some goals and objectives okay. with them and get them back on board. So reflect back and away you go. Yeah, in the past, we've done it before Christmas, but you know, this year we certainly don't want to do that. We want to do it in the new year um, because uh, you know what, we just want to get it really, uh, really going and um, and be ready to re, re engage and motivate your team. So, you know, what can you do that, that might create something? So, maybe some sort of event or some sort of quiz or or, or something in incentives or a lunch or something like that, just to get it all uh, happening back in the uh, 2022. And I think sometimes either doing it towards the end of the year or doing it towards the early part of the year is doing that survey. So, you know, what are you expecting for, from us as leaders yep. for, for the year? You know, what does it look like for, for them? What does it look like for us? So we're all in that same plan and the same thought process. Yes. I think I just want to point it out there that you know we believe in consultants. So I have a consultant that's going to go and ask some of your staff, Mayor and Alison, um, you know, staff about what could Mayor and Alison do to be more effective yeah. in 2022. And so, that was something we wanted to put in place just hmm. because we thought, okay, well, we've got the team where we want them to be. What can we do either to engage them or motivate them that little bit more? Or, uh, you know, is there something that's missing from our leadership um, to support them? Yep. So we just want to we'll want to make sure that 2022 is the best year of... That's right. Of the and we do that for others. You know, that's yeah. the thing. So we don't practice what we preach. Okay, so we're talking about one more thing and then I'm going to hand you over to May to, to finish out, finish off the present the, the webinar, but um, strategic planning. So that's the thing that... What does it do? Well, to me, it provides a direction of this is where we want to go. And we know that during the pandemic, people had to move or pivot is the word or realign their business. But I think, you know, have you documented it, have you just a well good document that everyone can follow? Creates a good, an agreement with all your key stakeholders, especially your stakeholders involved, I think is important. It provides clarity to all of your staff and proof that you have direction in the business. 
Um, and um, I think it's important that, you know, 2022 is a successful year, as you said, mate, it's got to be the year um, that's really gets the business back on track. So a lot of business owners, I know a lot of businesses that have got themselves into more debt, just trying to hang in um, till, uh, till the good, good times come, you know? Assist with, um, you know, what I call strategic intent. So this is where we want to go and prevent that strategic drift. So we, we aim to go here, but we don't. We want to make sure we stay on track, not drift and not hit our goals yeah. and objectives. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I really encourage is you can audit your, your business plan every quarter and conduct a SWOT analysis of the business plan, right? Because everyone can do a SWOT analysis of their business, but then what do you do with it? Now we do a, put a plan together, we do a SWOT of the business plan, and then we make any amendments that we might do. So I've actually got a great client coming in uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, we put a business plan and they've had a really good quarter this quarter where they've exceeded their expectations. So we're doing all of their, uh, uh, a SWOT of their business plan tomorrow and resetting those guidelines for 2022. And that, um, that plan that they had was for 12 months, but it's come so quickly. It's come and quicker, they're growing yeah. quickly because they had clear expectations, had a plan, and they worked towards it really rapidly. And now they've said, may I call them, we just want to have a review and, and see what we can do furthermore from here. Yes. Let's take us to the next level. Well, that's our next point, really. So I've been identifying what is needed for the company to grow. So they've planned for two staff members, which they've got, and now looks like they're going to go for another three staff members in the new year, which I think is absolutely fantastic. I think it's definitely, you know, those common goals and objectives for financial rewards because that's what we want at the end. We all want that financial reward and um, and to grow. And I think, look, um, having that strategic planning session or getting, getting yourself organised uh, is a definitely a great way of putting a pathway forward and a pathway to follow. Just on that business you were talking about or we were giving that case study on, um, you know, when they were recruiting a uh, staff member, one of the staff members asked, do you have a plan? He goes, I've got a plan. He pulled out a 30 or 36 page document, said, Is our plan for the next three years? Um, and it was really wrapped with uh, that employee, and she's been fantastic for that business. So um, it's it's good to give that direction, and it's something I'm very, very passionate about. Okay, Maya, ways to celebrate success and close the year out. I'll hand this over to you now. Wonderful. So, this is where I'm at, you know, I love all, all things rewards for staff, regardless of whether it's a pat on the back or or looking at any kind of gift that they get. So we're talking about celebrating the success. Doesn't matter how big it is or how small. So reflect on the path that you took. Did it work? Did it not work? How can we um, still, you know, they are, there are milestones and achievements which you um, opened up with today is we let's reflect on it. Let's see what we can do next time to do better. But really importantly, thanking your staff. Thanking you everyone that supported you making pulling through COVID was no, no not easy at all. So um, really looking at, you know, thanking you, whether it's an employee, contractors, the cleaners even, for doing a great job in the in the building. Um, and the people that bring, for example, our orders, you know, just thanking everyone along the way. One great way, other way is really writing your own little blog about it or a um, success story, you know. We, we tend to write good success stories based on experiences um, and creating that and providing it to our clients. And then the other one I say is give recognition and recognise staff. They are two different things from the thank you staff. The recognition, you know, it might be a $50 voucher or two movie tickets just to to be able to thank them for everything that they've done and, and increase their you know, mental health and well-being side of things as well. Most important, make sure they feel like they've been feel appreciated, done. right? Most of all, I think it's important. So when we're celebrating, it is a, a good thing to yep. ask, uh, regardless of the business size, whether you're a two-people business or you're a 200-people business, I think this is really important. So. Uh, for a new person, for example, when we had our first, um, our BDM came on board, you know, we really made a, we really made a big deal about it because the first win, right. even though they had been doing this for quite some time, um, but in our business, it was the first time that they had um, won a proposal from a particular client. So it doesn't matter who it is, or if it's someone like Gina, our HR administrator, just getting to know the client and building that confidence. We celebrate that. You know, that was a really good experience that you provided to that client and so forth. Yep. Um, when we're looking at the um, difference to someone, so where I'm talking about here, we've got, you know, during this particular time of the year, people are going to go on leave or people go on holidays. So 
just taking um, workloads off them. So whether it's uh, you know, pay, it's payroll or it's um, accounts, you know, we want to get bill, billing done and it might be um, end of month, who can come in to help out there? Or even just in a normal day to day, you've got a lot on your plate, who can help you out? Yep. And that's a big thank you to them as well. One of the things we always talk about, or you guys talk about in business is capacity. Who's got the capacity to do the work? Mm -hmm. I think it's important. And we know that when uh, someone says, oh, I've got capacity, you can hand that work to that particular person. That's a better way of doing it than saying, hey, let's look at all my plate, you take care of this, right? So it is about having that two way conversation. And, you know, we certainly got Snation yeah. last Friday, yes. as you know, right? So, uh, um, you know, it was just one of those days where uh, everyone wanted to know what one, one, one of our services. It was good. Yeah. And like, for example, someone's checked my calendar and said, hey, I noticed you've got this coming for the, um, later on this afternoon. Can I do that for you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So, but then the other thing that we want to do is when they when to celebrate is when they're achieving the company values. We're talking about quality focus and delivery in our business. We talk about how we want everyone to achieve that for the business. And yep. that's one of the big things that we always talk about. The other time is exceptional work, when they've gone above and beyond. Um, something out of the ordinary that they wouldn't necessarily do or it's not part of their job, um, but they've gone and done it anyway. I think that's fantastic to do then. And then when someone's consistently going above and beyond quite steadily, so you know when you do your performance review and they're constantly exceeding expectations, that itself is just to celebrate. Thank you so much for what you did. And if someone was consistently going above and beyond, you know, I would definitely recommend giving them some financial reward for that That's uh, right. as well, which is what it's, uh, what it's about. Okay, so do you want to take us through this last slide? I think yeah. it's yours. Um, yep, yep. So here's the way that I um, have put some things together in terms of a way of celebrating. So we've got characteristics on the left hand side and the right hand side ways to celebrate. Um, or the type of celebration to give. So when we're looking at a person that is a little bit of an introvert, uh, likes to hide behind the scenes, but then um, it's important to recognise them. So really looking, whether it's a handwritten note, thanks for your work and a smiley face on a post-it note, or even a personalised email to them to say, you know, job well done. I think you, you know, your fantastic contribution and so forth. So you independent one-on-one -on -one type of yeah. conversation. If it's a manager, looking at the way to inspire. When I'm talking about a direct forum, it might be whether we're in a leadership meeting, whether we're in a team meeting, um, or even if it's independently with them and say, you did a really good job closing that particular deal, or you did a really good job teaching the team, whatever the case may be. Um, when it's someone that's doing repetitive tasks, so it might be part of their, uh, you know, tasks to do, I guess, even payroll or accounts or something like that. You're consistently doing the same thing, but, you know, it might just be something that they've done ever so slightly different and say a special thanks to so-and-so for contributing uh, extremely hard. Yeah, like an email. Yeah. Yep. And if it's a social person, they always love to be recognised in front of a team meeting, saying a fantastic job for what they've done. Yep. If they recently joined and you still aren't sure about their whether the characteristics or the type of person they are, say in a private conversation, you did a fantastic job with this particular person um, and really just appreciate them for how they've already contributed to the business. And then when it's a team environment, it's really good to send the company email. I think it's really important. Cool. Cool. You know, we do always do a Friday wrap anyway, what we have achieved for the week and stuff like that, and how we're tracking I think it's really, really important. But, yeah. You know, definitely towards the end of the year, you know, it is all about festive season is about celebration it's about you know reflecting uh it's about you know um you know rewarding it's it's, it's everything it's giving you know that's what it's all about and i'm just put some extra points there just in some other ways that you can celebrate these small gifts like i said whether it's a chocolate whether it's a coffee you no know, oh, i really needed that coffee today other ones could be extra paid time off so you know then they've taken um done some extra work, you might want to say, hey, leave early, you're coming a little bit later, that's okay. And as I mentioned before, ticket to an event or um, a seminar or a workshop, that's really important. And then, like you said, Colt, before, it's really about providing the value, being right. recognised. And last but not least, there is bonuses. We all know that uh, being a sales business, um, bonuses is one of the biggest things, but, yeah. you know, it, it might, a bonus might be, a, a, again, a, a form of a voucher, might be a form of an additional payment. Yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I think what's really, really important, and look, you know, um, if you look at our social posts, you know, Emma, who we absolutely adore in this business, does all of our marketing, sent us a Christmas gift with a big balloon for the whole team. Like, you know what it is? It's, you know, like it's, you know, that's good culture. That's just good, uh, that's just uh, appreciation. And you know what's a great feeling as a business owner when you receive that, you know? So uh, it's a, to me, it's a two-way street. You know, we're all on the same page, we're all in it together, and we're here to grow. Okay, do we have any questions? So I uh, probably didn't mention at the start about putting some questions in the chat box, but Emma, do we have any questions? Um, I know you're sitting there in the background, so anyone give us any questions from today's um, seminar? Um, no, no questions at this stage. Well, everyone feels like they want to add a question, they can do that. So uh, no problems at all. And look, you know, our giveaway. So, you know, what's really important is, um, you know, we have a, a new uh, a new product, which is called Catalyst, and we're going to give away some some profiles, um, some personal profiles, and I think it's really, really important. We've got management profiles up there, but we can set that up in, the, uh, in this product called Catalyst. It'll be a workplace profile, but that's all right, whatever the customer prefers. But why don't we just grab this box down here and... May if you could uh, reach out for the, the twenty odd people who registered for this uh, um, webinar, who is our first person that we have? Yeah, got two. Well, there's actually two. You can take the two. Take the two. Okay. Yes, it. Yeah. Perfect. All righty. We have Chris from Acambo. Chris Holcomb. Yep. Yeah. And the other one is Margaret. Margaret Kinsley from Geelong Bank. Wonderful. So congratulations, guys. You will receive a, a, a disc profile and uh, Emma will send out an invitation to you uh, and explain what you've won. Thank you very, very much, everyone, for 2021. Thank you, Maya, for doing a webinar with me. Yeah. This is the way we're going to do it now. Two in front of a camera. So we've all had that social distancing with masks. Better do it differently, but uh, we're definitely set up as a company for 2022. So any questions, um, Emma, at all? Uh, no, no, no. No questions? No. Wonderful. Okay, so our next seminar, we're going to kickstart 2022, 17th of January. Um, and, and it's to stick to your business plan. So if you haven't got one, you can write it over Christmas. If you need help, come and speak to me. I'll help you write it um, and develop it because I do more than just writing it. We, we workshop it together. But um, these are our three main topics that we're going into in, uh, in this webinar for uh, 2022 is the importance of having a business plan, understanding your value and sharing it with your plan with, to empower others. And I think that's definitely something we've shown in this business uh, over the last... Uh, six months and the ways to uh, for the accountability to stick to your plan. So making sure that you hold, hold each other and each, uh, accountable to, uh, to, to you execute it and don't strategic drift. So on behalf of us, this is what we specialize in. If you need our help or services, that would be fantastic. If you really love today and enjoy what we've done, give us a Google review because that's what we're all trying to do. Um, get more people to, uh, to follow us. So thank you very much. Merry, Merry Christmas to everyone. Have a wonderful um, and safe uh, new year and uh, we'll see you in 2022. Thank you, see you, bye.